Rusty Quill presents. Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings and listen with care. My God, I've done it. I've, I've, I've done it. I've harnessed the energy. I, I knew I had. I knew I had it in me. <sighs> <laughs> He's very excited. Oh, he peed his pants. <laughs> no. <laughs> Float to the ceiling, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, fizzy lifting drink style, and you find Dr. Graham up there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's nothing that grand. Your feet are now floating about an inch off the ground. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Can, can I propel myself? No. Oh, I have a walking stick in my inventory. Can I put that on the ground and like kind of row myself? <laughs> You're punting yourself. Okay. Correct. <laughs> I always said you were a punt. Oh. He just goes pinballing around the room. He's just got no control. Oh. Oh. I want to get back into the portal room if I can. <laughs> but I'd like to find something to tie to my legs as a weight if I can find anything. I think it's time to go down in the hole if I can just stop floating. <laughs> God. Do you know it? Do you know the meek ways we have bathing? The must for hibernating? The need for bookcasing? I feel I'm getting better. I feel it in my bones. Inside my body and underneath my clothes. I mean, you can see there's all sorts of potentially heavy things around here. Yeah. There are a few chairs, for example. Okay. Um, great. Can I secure myself to a chair with a belt and try to jump headfirst into the portal? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be headfirst. Well, let's have a dex roll to see how all this works for a start. Oh, my dex is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll spend one point of luck. Look at you. So you do somehow manage to bind yourself to the chair, punt yourself across the ground, mm -hmm. dragging this chair behind you, and go over <laughs> to the portal, and what, are you using the chair as an anchor? Yeah, the chair's going first, and then I'm kind of like falling head first in behind it, I imagine. <laughs> okay. And yeah, the chair falls through, and you find yourself... Pulled down a bit, and basically your head is now sticking through the portal while your feet are still floating an inch above the ground. If your head just goes down through, there's suddenly all this warm, moist air around you, and you're face to face with a couple of very surprised looking rats. <laughs> <laughs> my God, why did it have to be rats? And start swatting at them. <laughs> oh my God. And they're the ones with the cord. I love it. <laughs> Well, let's come back to you in just a second. So there is this spasming cooking centipede that's thrashing around. Yeah. What I do think I want is dodge rolls off all three of you to see whether it's death throws end up clobbering you at all. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot, Scott. Yeah. This is this is storytelling, baby. Mm, I'm using eight luck points. <laughs> That's probably eight luck well spent, considering how badly battered you are. Yes. What about the rest of you? Lottie failed. I'm debating about spending 25. What's my luck? You know what? Nah, 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 nah. This is this fourth quarter, right? <laughs> I take the damage. I failed. So Vivian and Lottie are both struck by this monstrous beast as it thrashes around and you both arc through the air in very different directions and land in pools of mouldering vegetation and water and slime. Ew. However, the centipede is going to do quite a lot of damage to you potentially as it strikes you. Yeah, Lottie was actually on top of the centipede, so if you want to hurl me into a tree or something, you know what I mean? Like, that would have been a woo! <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for you, there aren't any trees around here. They're just very large ferns, which are perhaps a bit softer to, to collide with. Just ferns. Gotcha. Oh, you still take nine points of damage. Fair enough. Oof! Vivian only takes seven. 
No, you're sweet. You've landed in a nice, soft, slimy pool. And where Vivian has landed, you're face down and you can see just next to you is the rather rotten-looking form of a human corpse. Its face is pretty well skeletal at this stage. Wait, 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 (laughs) wait. (laughs) As we see it, I also want to pull up my compass that points to nearest recent death. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Won't that be the centipede? (laughs) Yeah, it's either going to point at the centipede or at Charles's pride. Oh, <laughs> oh it doesn't point at Charles Darwin? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> one can hope, one can hope, one can hope. I think the fact that you've got a giant dying centipede is probably going to throw the compass off a little bit. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Looking at the body that's starting to, oh, you say it was rapidly decomposed as skeleton. Can I make out a, a gender? I, I'm hoping for either Graham or Miss Moody, but I can go either way or none of the above. It's difficult to tell precisely, but from the remnants of hair that are stuck to the skull and the few scraps of clothes that haven't decomposed, it does look like a woman's body. And she looks up at this nice, beautiful skull. And she just, she she has this moment. Like, I wonder what type of person Miss Moody was. And just a rapid splashing, she goes and she puts both hands onto this skull. And just almost like lovingly goes like, oh, something I can control. Something that I can control. Tell me who you were, Moody. Tell me who you are. And then I would like to roll my phrenology. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what's important right you now. You can phrenology the fuck out of this dead woman. Yeah, I'm the weirdo. Science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a 46 under something really high in her phrenology. It'd be a, it'd be a hard... I'm going to spend the six to make it a hard success because I really want to know who Eliza Moody was. I'd say, has he got a hard success there? Let's reward that. Because you realize as you're examining the skull that you have examined this person's head before, and this isn't Eliza Moody. This is a, another one of the maids who went missing a while back, about a month ago. Mm. A girl called Mary Wren. Mm, Mary Wren, Mary Wren, Mary Wren, Mary Wren. Oh, okay. As I'm standing holding the compass that's, like, in front of the centipede, (laughs) I'll say, I can confirm it is dead. (laughs) Dr. Mitchell, what do you have there? A rather very disappointing discovery, unfortunately. I thought I had possibly come across the corpse or the remains of one Eliza Moody, but unfortunately, this is the this is the maid who went missing approximately 36 days ago. This is the skull of Mary Wren. I've already examined her. I'm not gathering any new information off of this particular discovery. I am disappointed. So Lottie has been flung from this. Oh. And she's like somewhere <laughs> off, uh, like tossed into a bushes, with, like a set of ferns. It's just like, ah! 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 And then when that kind of comes through the Mary Wren, she's like, you see a hand pop up from, from, like, from under the fence. It's like, I have something for that. <laughs> she comes over. A dead body, you say? And as you say that, a chair falls down from the sky. What? <laughs> can we see Charles from here? Dear, you can see Charles's head basically nose to nose with these two very distressed looking rats. Ah, Thank you, Dr. Darwin, for the chair. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Can I climb down the wire, which is floating? I don't know how these physics are working. Neither do we. The wire is fairly heavy, but it's not that heavy. And as you're pulling, you're just pulling us up towards you. Oh. Is it still attached to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit in the chair! (laughs) Charles, if you can still extract yourself from the portal, perhaps you could take those rats and tie off that wire to something on the other side, and then come through. Would you mind? It's worth a shot. Okay. (laughs) 
Can I do that? Try to pull myself back out of the... I'm floating, I know, but, you know, do my best to tie off the wire. Let's have a dex roll to see how well you pull all this off. (laughs) All right. You know, I thought about threading it through a nipple hoop, but then that just seems dangerous. It makes for some great storytelling, though, Cup. (laughs) (laughs) Just so that I stay anchored to the wire. Oh, my God. Nipples cannot be that strong. No, no. The tensile strength of nipples. (laughs) I got a regular success, barely. Somehow, then, you have managed to get the cable with these rats up through the hole. You've managed to punt yourself back. And you can find perhaps a heavy desk to tie them to. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. What are you doing with the rats? (laughs) I was just going to leave them floating, like, above the desk. Sure. Actually, could I take one with me, like cut it off? Because I want to test it to see if I can get that one to stop floating. Maybe I can get myself to stop floating. So I want to experiment on it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can certainly remove it. We'll worry about whether or not you can stop it from floating later. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I'll take that with me. And then I want to try to go down through the hole if it's like climbing down the wire. However, I need to do that. Hand over hand, kind of head first. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like climbing a rope only upside down. (laughs) He's very good at that, I imagine. And I'm at the bottom. (laughs) Why is he good at that? Why? Like, once his full body is in wherever we are, does he, like, rotate where his feet... No, no, no. No? (laughs) Great. His feet just seem to be floating above him, and he's, he's pulling himself down. Don't try to help him, Josephine. Just let him suffer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be there in a moment. This is uh, pretty difficult. Uh, maybe sit in the chair to help anchor the wire. It is uh, anchored to me. <laughs> I know you're all petite. <laughs> we are <laughs> so petite. <laughs> but it sounds like Lottie and Vivian are perhaps a bit more concerned with the dead body they found. Lottie's like rummaging through her, after she yells that up to Charles, rummaging through her bag. I know I put it in here somewhere. I did mention that she's been experimenting with reanimation. Yes. To be clear, this is a body that has been largely stripped of flesh. Yeah. Nick says, I understand. (laughs) I know. (laughs) But I also understand my assignment. We must test at every stage of decomposition, you see, to understand (laughs) the limits of the science. The science, uh, yes. The science, uh. <laughs> Dr. Desta, I agree. Uh, the man-child will join us soon, so do whatever you need. <laughs> I love the idea, too, that like anytime someone yells science, there's a chorus from the other. The science? Science! science. <laughs> <laughs> now, does Lottie have... Weird science. Or I think you said no. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I keep trying this shit and I don't have the stuff for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is if you want to try using your botanical extracts to see whether you can reanimate this dead body, you could do it as spontaneous use of the Cthulhu Mythos skill. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, yeah, why not? I mean, what have we got to lose? 24. <laughs> I'm going to push that oh. by uh, just pouring more. <laughs> okay. so wow. Yep, because that, that's how you do it. This is a volatile concoction, too. And now there's just more of it. And it's two things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, please, please push that roll. Man, well, I failed it. Do you have luck points? You can't spend luck on a pushed roll. Oh, I, I knew that. Even though you rolled a 19, you got within nine points of it there. That's not good enough. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. Excellent. (laughs) (laughs) So this botanical extract that you've got, yeah, it does have revivification properties. And as you sprinkle it over the body, it seems to be reviving a lot of the dead plant matter and, and so on in the area. And there's dead animal tissue. And obviously there's there's the corpse as well. And they all seem to be 
binding together. You can see this rotting fern and and other plant tissue just binding with the skeleton and creating this this mossy mass over it that is beginning to groan and try to push itself off the ground. As she was starting to, uh, in the same way that Dr. Lovelace was trying to explain her science, a lot of these that are out there. You see, there is this mold, and it affects ants and other insects, and it brings them back to life. You see, it takes over them, and it um it reanimates them. It gives them movement, and 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 directs them towards its own ends. It's fascinating, and she's just pouring this all over, like <laughs> just a, a wide area. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see this corpse now pushing itself up more and more. Mary? <laughs> Is that you? Looking at you with these empty eye sockets, and its mouth opens, and there's this rotting vegetation just running down its, its mossy chin as it's looking at you, and there's hmm. this bubbling sound coming out. Fascinating. Let's have sand rolls off everyone, I think. And that feels right for me today. It does. I'm here for this. I completely forgot the sand roll for the centipede, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I'm on a pass. I failed. I also failed amazingly. <laughs> oh, good for you. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I failed by two. <laughs> oh, the disrespect. <laughs> and how about Charles? Oh, I have to roll this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Upside down, baby. I rolled an 11. It's fine. Nice. So it's just Vivian and Lottie who failed, which seems appropriate as they're the two who are messing around with this corpse the most. All up in this thing's business, yeah. So Lottie loses four points of San. Uh-oh. And so does Vivian. Oh, neither of you hit the magic Ooh. five there. I'm disappointed. <laughs> oh, that brings me down to 91 San. <laughs> well, so high. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nice sand, baby. Your power is out here sexy as shit. <laughs> you know, I think you have to be. She's a little crazy already, I think, is what it, was what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm asking you with my brain, what do you want? <laughs> Are you Mary Wren? <laughs> the figure lurches towards you and reaches out with one moss-covered hand, almost pathetically, as if reaching towards you for help. And then the hand clamps round your throat. Ooh. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Not what I raised you for. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a, a dodge or something I could attempt? Or a, like a breaking free? Yeah, you can dodge or fight back or whatever you want. I was originally going to dodge, but then I rolled really well. And now I want to fight back. <laughs> That I will stick to my original. I got a nine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I only got an 89 for her attempt to grab you. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Considering the state that her body's in anyway, you pull back and the arm just breaks at the elbow. And there is this very weak forearm just dangling off your neck like a tie as the body is lurching around. Yes, I think that she like... <laughs> Ugh, takes it off. Oh, goodness. Poorly made. <laughs> well, this is a disappointment. And this is not Eliza. No, I have confirmed by searching that her skull, this is Mary Wren. Then this is not who we are searching for, is that correct? No, we are in pursuit of one Eliza Moody, who disappeared two days ago. Oh, that voice. I need to go faster. <laughs> 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 Dr. Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep pulling. Hand over hand until I get down. Considering that Rita is the anchor to which this this cable is tied, as Charles is pulling himself down, he's just getting closer and closer to Rita. Hello, Dr. Darwin. That is close enough. <laughs> oh, well, Rita, I need to get all the way down to the ground. I, I really need Dr. Dester. Oh, I see. Or maybe parasites could work. Um... Now, how strong are your arms? And I'd like to shake the cable a bit like make little <laughs> waves throughout that's so petty <laughs> wait, wait don't do that I, I, this is serious Rita. in the spirit of scientific inquiry <laughs> for science should i roll to hold on 
Yeah, it can be a dex roll to see whether you can hold on. Oh, that's not strength. <laughs> what is the grip strength of one man child? <laughs> <laughs> That is what we are testing today, my friends. <laughs> Shit. See, strength, I would have had enough luck. I'm going to push the roll. Good for you. What I'm going to try to do is, uh, as she starts shaking the wire, I'm going to try to entangle myself in it <laughs> so that I don't get shaken off. Oh, this is a good call. That's a nice description yeah. for a push. Yeah, that's good, Cup. Mm-hmm. I hope you fail. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, baby. And guess what? <laughs> I failed. Oh, no. 58 over 45. Well, the good news is you have entangled yourself in it, and you're not floating up into the sky helplessly, potentially to be lost. The bad news is you've entangled your neck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this takes you back to Nicholas Minovici's hanging studies, where he'd hang himself for short periods of time just to see the effect on the human body. Yes. <laughs> you remember reading that he had to build up to longer and longer durations, and that initially five seconds was enough to, to incapacitate him. God, I meant to practice. Well, let's see how much better you fare. <laughs> Uh, look, doctors, he is attempting uh, Minovici's hanging experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Upside down. We should help with the observation. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Fully standing back, letting this happen. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Either way, if I were to pull him down, I think it would strangulate more. And <laughs> I am simply locked at what to do. <laughs> Are you, are you going to die now? What's happening? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm waiting for a roll. He might. Is Vivian just documenting this as well? <laughs> oh, like, it's not that Vivian is not a good person. It's just that Vivian isn't a good person. So, yeah, I mean, for science, you know, I mean, at this point, what's one lost life when we can get all this data from it? Jeez. Here, would you like to use... I will bring out the opera glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Come have a closer look at the experiment in action. Oh, thank you. These, these are actually very spectacular. Thank you so much. Let's give Charles one last roll then to see whether he just ends up being an interesting data point. So... One last? One last roll? Now I feel bad. <laughs> Let's kill Cup. <laughs> This is more to see whether you can untangle yourself before you black out from having the blood supply cut off to your brain. Mm. That's not terrible. We can work with that. So let's have a constitution roll just to see whether you black out before you manage to untangle your neck. You got this, Cup. You figured out early that Dex and Con are my two low uh, (laughs) numbers. Oh, no. (laughs) Come on, Cup. You got it. Uh, I can spend luck. (laughs) I'll spend nine luck. Just as the darkness is coming in on the edge of your vision, you manage at the last minute to untangle it from round your neck. (sighs) I think I did it better than (laughs) Medovici. Yes. (sighs) It has affected your voice and given us a blessing in disguise. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so petty. Ah. I, I feel like a new man. <laughs> Listen, honey, erotic strangulation can do that for you. <laughs> I'm going to pull myself down to the bottom with a newfound vigor, I think. <laughs> That's not the description I needed right now. No. <laughs> with the nipple hoops. <laughs> hey, those are now under a shirt. It's, enough time has passed. Yeah. Okay. You're okay. What, that you grew a shirt? No, I, I went back. <laughs> no, after he peed himself the second time, he went and got changed again. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> uh, Dr. Darwin, uh, catch up. We are still looking for Mrs. Moody. Eliza, I will <laughs> shout. Oh, yes. I just had an accident when I got entangled. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, Dr. Lovelace. Uh, How much hydration do you keep up? <laughs> it is a marvel, a scientific marvel at this point. Oh, just for a point of clarification, I don't actually believe that's urination. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> what could it be? <laughs> we must take a sample. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Um, Hold still, Charles. <laughs> You're only supposed to kill Cup's character, not Cup himself. <laughs> I cannot. Laddie is heading crotchward, and then, oh, Charles, you seem to be floating. Yes, I was hoping that either you or Dr. Lovelace would have something to stop the floating. Here, I brought a rat, <laughs> maybe some drugs or parasites or anything, really. I'm quite desperate, you see. Yes, 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 full of science. Uh, she'll pull out her, her alchemical <laughs> kit and or start feeding this rat hallucinogens. <laughs> there you go. We're about to have a spaced out rat. Oh, my gosh. Not sure what the dosage is for a rat, but uh, here we go. <laughs> no, I think that's how they do it in Skinner's box, too. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> you could consume this tapeworm, Dr. Darwin, <laughs> and I believe it will seek out that which makes you float. <laughs> oh, yes, and then I could wear a corset and... Uh... <laughs> yes, it shall cave out any excess that is causing air in your body that is science <laughs> oh, I, I like this i like this better than the drugs um do you mind i do not i have many on hand <laughs> i'll take out a vial with a tapeworm in it and tweezers and pull up the tape and say say ah and he sticks his tongue out he's very gross <laughs> you are like a little baby bird in this moment as he opens his mouth for the tapeworm, <laughs> Lottie will drop in some some drugs. Oh, no. <laughs> Just a little bit. In conjunction, I'm sure the effect will be wonderful. <laughs> I agree. That is how Charles finds himself deep throating a hallucinogenic tapeworm. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Eliza, I go shouting. You go shouting, and I will say you can make a spot hidden roll just to see how your search for human remains goes. Yeah. Human remains, okay, showing your hand there, I think. Oh, good, well, at least we know, we know what we're working with. <laughs> Dr. Mitchell. So, with that, the good news is you do find another rotted body. The bad news is this one seems to be a man. He's wearing the remains of of a tweed coat, you think, or tweed jacket. Oh, this is so disappointing. This must be our Dr. Graham. Yeah, yeah, it does look like perhaps the kind of tweed jacket that Dr. Graham used to wear. Are you feeling the tickles of the parasitic enjoyment within your belly? Am I? Um, <laughs> how long does a tapeworm take to work its way down near your system? <laughs> oh, this is quite a mature worm. <laughs> it knows exactly where and when to go and has become one of my quickest employees. <laughs> Wait, does that mean, I'm sorry, Dr. Lovelace, does that mean that this parasite has been in someone else before? Oh, yes. Excellent. My parasites, <laughs> they visit many a host. Quite excellent. If they could get medals of honour for the war ground that is human bodies, they would be so decorated, you see. <laughs> oh, God. Uh-huh. Just goes over to Charles, opens his mouth and yells in, We thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not working, right? I'm still floating. <laughs> You're still floating. There is an unpleasant tickling from your esophagus. Here we go. You can begin to perhaps feel the, the beginnings of something happening to your perception. Everyone else is wandering around finding dead bodies. You're still floating. Okay. 
The rat is squeaking in quite an alarming way because God only knows how it's reacting to all these psychedelics. <laughs> and perhaps in your altered state of mind, something occurs to you as, as you're just surveying all this chaos around you in this, this very strange landscape. Didn't Vivian mention that that brick wall had been built like a month ago? And Eliza Moody went missing a couple of days ago? Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus oh yeah. Listen. Um, <laughs> well, I think we can assume that Eliza is deceased, but just not now here. Apparently, mm -hmm. back up we go. Um, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Although there are plants here that have not been seen for many, many years. Um. Dr. Lovelace, you have encountered a massive parasite that seemed to power your device. Oh, yes. In extraordinary ways. Dr. Mitchell, I, I'm not sure what kinds of skulls you might find here. Dr. Darwin is also here. I, I wonder <laughs> if perhaps a bit more exploration might be, might be in order. I would welcome many samples from this <laughs> realm we find ourselves in, yes. Let's be honest, Eliza is probably dead. She's not going for wherever she is, you know. She'll, she'll be there in a moment, so we could just take a little time to explore a bit more. Could one of you carry me or push me in the chair as we explore? Just hold on. It's just that I'm floating. <sighs> yeah. Just hold on to the cable, you man-child. <laughs> <laughs> but drag the cable with you is all I'm asking, uh... It's still connected to my body. My God, can you not see anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a little fuzzy, to be honest. Um... Certainly, as you're being moved through the air on the cable, you seem to be leaving trails behind you. <laughs> Lottie's like looking at the bottle. Oh, darn, did I give you the good shit? <laughs> <laughs> Saving that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Quick question, what's going on with skeleton Mary right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know she's, like, missing forearm. Is she just kind of, like, hanging out? She's following Lottie around like a lost one-armed puppy dog at the moment. Oh. <gasps> I have an idea. <laughs> Charles, you said you wanted to be tied to something? <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm put Mary to use. You can ride Mary. I mean... Uh... <laughs> I don't know if she's large enough uh, to anchor me to the <laughs> ground. Um, Nonsense. Seems to be made of plants, too. <laughs> <laughs> Larger than all of us. Do you think I should hypnotize her? Maybe we could learn something from uh, <laughs> what she's been through. In the name of science, I don't see why not. Science. Could someone remove my shirt? Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll just do it with a bonus die then. Uh, <laughs> He wants to display those nipple rings, you see. <laughs> I understand the man is a player. <laughs> <laughs> They're totally cosmetic. <laughs> it's like costume jewelry. Can I, um... Oh my gosh. Can I just do a regular hypnosis of the monster? <laughs> Why can't you take off your shirt, Charles? You have use of both your hands. <laughs> You're floating. There's also the fact that you're holding onto the cable, which makes it a bit difficult to take the shirt off. Yeah, and I'm very high right now, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> you're floating only, you know, a metre off the ground. <laughs> Not that high. So uh, he can just kind of rip the shirt at the chest and do his little hypnosis thing, uh, you know, uh, kind of wave the uh, half-sister's daughter pendant. <laughs> okay. <sighs> <laughs> Let me just... Try to work out what you're trying to get out of hypnotizing this rotting plant zombie. I think really at the heart of it, I'm trying to get Cthulhu mythos knowledge. I want to learn like what this portal is all about, what happened to her, how she got down here. Sure. Okay, then, yeah. It scouts like a hate job. You can absolutely do that. Do you all agree that this is ethical? I mean, um, typically. Ethical? We're <laughs> scientists. What do we care about ethics? We're science. Uh, this yes. is the Victorian era. We do whatever the fuck we want. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm so high. I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cadaver, Dr. Darwin. Uh, it has no life left in it. Okay, no, that's fair. Maybe when we get back, we'll talk about institutional review boards or something. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm doing the hypnosis. Let's have a mesmerism roll. Uh, Okay. What I'll say is we can make this a, a sort of combined mesmerism Cthulhu Mythos role. Ooh. If you pass the mesmerism on its own, you'll learn a bit. But if you pass the Cthulhu Mythos role, you'll actually be able to communicate properly with whatever the fuck this is. Spend oh, the luck. Oh, come on, luck. Cup. Spend the luck. <laughs> I rolled a 16, so I'm going to spend the luck down to a 10. Yes. In which case... Yeah, maybe there is still something of Mary about what it is you're communicating with, but mostly what you're communicating with is the plants and the dead animals and so on that have all been matted into this. And you yes. you get more of an impression of, yeah, at some point this hole opened up and things have come through at various stages. And when you get the impression of things, you realise that it means people like you. And that at various points, things have gone out through the hole. But beyond that, it doesn't really understand much. You do get the feeling that Mary and and also Dr. Graham ended up down here because predators, these large centipedes, found their way up, just grabbed them and pulled them back down and devoured them here. Right. So I'll relay that to the people around me, the scientists, and say, um, can I try to commune with the plants here? <laughs> and the wildlife? My God. I think you already are, and I think in your psychedelic state of mind, you absolutely <laughs> believe that you're communicating with every living thing in the area, that it's all one consciousness, that you are all tied together on a cosmic level, really. Aren't you already just one huge life form? You are the universe's way of experiencing itself. <laughs> you want to so much. Yes, there. We underestimated the intricate systems of the universe and um, let me get a drop of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that's Dr. Mitchell speaking in a, in a new way. It's all been an act. Can I roll sanity on that realization, Scott? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, shit, I passed again. I keep passing that. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it's oddly comforting. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's comforting to know that ultimately you and the rotting plant zombie are one and the same. Maybe we should stay here. On the realization that I'm communing with this strange land and that the universe is, is all interconnected, can I cut the wire? <laughs> oh... <laughs> Oh. oh, and the guy upstairs all racing, he's about to break us back in. Oh, yeah, I think you absolutely can. Can we see this happening? And if so, can I sedate <laughs> Dr. Darwin <laughs> with my medical kit? Can I be distracting Dr. Loveless? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to distract me? Give me a spot hidden roll for Dr. Loveless. And if Lolly is distracting you, this would have to be a hard success then if you're being distracted. This is amazing. You're trying to look at him. I'm just, I have some questions about the, uh, about the, the parasite, about the tapeworm. Well, I think the man child is about to make a grave error. <laughs> well, he does that all the time. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> Wait, what check am I doing? <laughs> a hard spot hidden. Okay. Oh boy. Nope. <laughs> they deserve to get trapped down here. Lottie, I cannot see past you. Yeah, and then there is this splash sound as the cable lands in the swampy water. Hmm. Well, that takes care of that. <laughs> why? Why? Am I floating away now? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're just buoyant, right? High out of his mind, floating away. We'll be together forever. <gasps> Both literally and metaphorically, Charles is getting higher and higher. <laughs> 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 
I hate all of y'all. I love you, Dr. <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> well. And like a child's lost balloon at the fair, you see Charles just drifting off into the sky. Hmm. Well, it would seem that this is now our new kingdom. And that's not rain. <laughs> no! <laughs> ah, no! I'm holding out for something. I know nothing of what it is. And I'm waist deep in the middle of a mess. Like a splinter that's been lodged inside, burying all the coal from seasons past. That's it. Okay. I shut it off. You are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody. For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Or subscribe to Ain't Slayed Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits, and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you, and good luck out there.